Hello folks, I'm Alan for today's news. I will be reading and speaking about world news, interesting news, news to keep you entertained, and news to keep you informed. First thing I got for you from Newsmax. Governor Abbott says, Dominion must address Tucker Carlson axing. Even when you feel low, you can still go. Even when you feel slow, you can still go. Even when... Texas Republican Governor Greg Abbott wants Dominion voting systems to explain whether it played a role in the firing of former Fox News host Tucker Carlson. Fox News fired Carlson, its most popular primetime anchor, soon after the network agreed to a settlement with Dominion for $787.5 million. That settlement was reached shortly before a trial was set to begin on Dominion's claims that Fox News defamed the company by spreading election lies about the 2020 election. If the public reporting is accurate that Dominion voting systems demanded that Tucker Carlson be fired as part of a litigation settlement, then I am happy that Dominion does not operate in Texas, and I don't think that they should do so in the future," Abbott tweeted Saturday. We may disagree with others' positions, but we should never try to improperly silence views contrary to our own. The governor added that if Dominion wants to do business with Texas in the future, they should first answer questions about what role, if any, they played in silencing a prominent conservative journalist. The answers to those questions, and other factors, should guide whether we want them to operate here. Abbott's tweet linked to an Axios story that reported Carlson's lawyers had sent a letter to Fox accusing Fox News of fraud and breach of contract. The Axios story also reported that two sources said Carlson was told by a member of the Fox board that he was taken off the air as part of the Dominion settlement. Dominion spokeswoman Claire Bischoff previously told Newsmax that, Dominion has been on the record clearly stating that cancelling Carlson's show was not part of the settlement agreement. A Dominion spokeswoman also told Newsweek that Carlson's job status was not part of the settlement agreement and any claims otherwise are false. However, an attorney representing Dominion suggested the company's lawsuit against Fox News resulted in Carlson being canned. Dominion did not insist on them, Fox News, firing Tucker Carlson as part of the settlement, said Dominion lawyer Stephen Shackelford in an interview with Axios. But the very fact that that's what resulted out of all of this, and it's traceable from the work that Dominion and Staple Street set in motion, of course, I know what's in the redacted stuff, and I can't say anything about it. I hope that it all gets unredacted at some point. Fox News firing of Carlson on April 24 came soon after the settlement averted a trial that would have exposed how the network promoted lies about the 2020 presidential election. Text messages sent by Carlson were made public as part of that lawsuit. Carlson has announced he will be producing a new version of his show on Twitter. Starting soon, we'll be bringing a new version of the show we've been doing for the last six and a half years to Twitter, he said in a tweeted video. We'll bring some other things, too, which we'll tell you about. But for now we're just grateful to be here. Okay, and that's all I got on that one there. The links, all the links will still be in my description box. And let me go to the next one. Okay, this is from Newsmax. This is from report. Border Patrol arrests Afghan on FBI terror watch list. U.S. Customs and Border Protection agents on Wednesday arrested an Afghan national who was on the FBI's terror watch list crossing into the United States from the southern border, Fox News reported, citing sources within the agency. Representative Daryl Issa, Republican California, who represents the district where the man was apprehended, near Ote Mesa, California, told Fox News the Biden administration's border policies are a national security concern. Biden's open borders, Issa said, aren't just a gateway to five million illegals, record human and child trafficking, and the deadliest drug crisis in our history. Biden's reckless policy is also an open invitation to even the most wanted terrorists in the world to come to America. They know they'll never have to leave. The nation knows what's going on and this president has only begun to be held accountable for what he has done. The apprehension took place a day before the expiration of Title 42, a Trump administration policy invoked during the COVID-19 pandemic that allowed for the rapid deportation of illegal immigrants because of health concerns. Okay, and that's all I got on that one there. Yeah, Biden and uh, his son, they're both going to get it. Just wait. I wish they would get it now. Anyway, let me go to the next one. This is from The Drive. Ukraine ammo storage site oh, oh, lit, uh, liberated where huge fireball scene. Even when you feel low, you can still go. Even when you feel slow, you can still go. 
New satellite imagery of an ammunition and explosive storage site just to the west of the Ukrainian city of Khmelnytsky show that most of the installation has been wiped off the map. Yesterday, videos emerged showing an absolutely gigantic fireball rising over the outskirts of Khmelnytsky. The destruction was clearly caused by a series of huge secondary explosions. Now we know for certain that it was indeed this site. The image comes to us via Planet Labs and was taken on the morning of May 14, 2023. It shows the storage area destroyed and deeply scarred and discolored from the huge explosion. The size of destruction is quite remarkable as the secure storage area is a half mile wide. Photo copyright 2023 Planet Labs Inc. All rights reserved. Reprinted by permission. And there's more to read on that if you want to read the rest of it. We'll go to my next one. Okay, this is a Business Insider. Four Russian military aircraft ambushed and shot down near Ukraine border, Russian media reports. Even when you feel low, you can still go. Even when you feel slow, you can still go. Even when there's no hope. Four Russian aircraft have been shot down near the Ukrainian border, per a Russian news outlet. It may be the most Russian aircraft lost in a single day during the war, a pro-Russia blog said. Ukraine has not claimed responsibility for the attack. Full screen. One of seven photos. Or Russian fighter jets and two military helicopters have been shot down in Russia near the Ukrainian border, Russian news outlet Commerçant reported. The outlet said that one Su-34 fighter bomber, a Su-35 fighter, and two Mi-8 helicopters have been shot down in Russia's Bryansk region, killing all four crews. The air group most likely fell into an air ambush, said Commerçant. The jets were supposed to launch a coordinated missile and bomb attack on Ukraine's Chernihiv region, while the helicopters were there to provide support and to pick up Sioux crews if they were shot down, the outlet reported, citing preliminary data. Commerçant did not provide evidence that the four aircraft had been downed, but several Russian pro-war military bloggers made the same claim, Reuters reported. Regional Russian authorities have confirmed the crash of one helicopter, per Russian state news agency TASS. Footage circulating on social media appears to show the helicopter catching fire and falling from the sky. Insider was not able to independently verify the videos. The governor of Russia's Bryansk region, Alexander Bogomaz, said that five houses were damaged and a woman was injured due to the helicopter crash in the town of Klintsy. Russian military bloggers and aviation experts have speculated that the aircraft had either been caught by friendly fire or shot down by Ukraine, according to the Telegraph. Okay, and there's a little bit more to read on that if you want to read the rest of it. I'm going to go to the next one now. This is from uh, Benzinga. Peter Schiff predicts dire consequences that default or massive inflation in inevitable. inevitable. As the debt ceiling crisis continues to persist, Peter Schiff, chief economist and global strategist at Euro-Pacific Capital believes either a default on the national debt or massive inflation would be possible. Experts agree that if the hashtag debt ceiling is not raised, and the US government is no longer able to borrow, it will be impossible for the government to pay its bills. That means the US has already borrowed more than it can repay. Either default or massive hashtag inflation is inevitable, Schiff said in his tweet. Also read, how to invest in startups. And the latest development regarding the matter, President Joe Biden said he expects to meet with congressional leaders on Tuesday for talks on the debt ceiling crisis. The president was earlier set to meet with House Speaker Kevin McCarthy and senior congressional leaders on Friday but the meeting was postponed. Although the standoff continues, a wide section of the market believes there will be a resolution and the country will not witness a default. Wall Street has so far avoided any sharp negative reaction to the debt ceiling standoff. The SPDR S&P 500 ETF Trust, NYSE, SPY, lost just 0.34% in the last five days while the Invesco QQQ Trust Series 1, NASDAQ, QQQ, gained 0.77%. Inflation, however, as far as inflation is concerned, there are strong opinions among certain experts that the Federal Reserve will continue with its aggressive monetary policy for some more time. For instance, Johanna Chua, chief APAC economist at Citigroup Global Markets, said last week that inflation is likely to be quite persistent and the central bank may go for two more rate hikes in coming times. This stands in line with Schiff's opinion that April's lower-than-expected inflation print at 4.9% should not be a reason for optimism given the fact that the figure is still higher than the Fed's target of 2%.
Okay, and that's all I got on that one there. And I'm going to go to the next one now. It's from uh, Ukrainska Uk Pravda. Calibrate, uh, calibrators flee and mass from Octopi, Ukraine South. Collaborators are fleeing en masse to the Russian Federation from the temporarily captured territories of Zaporizhia and Kherson Oblasts. Source, National Resistance Center. Details, reportedly, panic is spreading among the traders in the south of Ukraine, many of them have already left the occupied territories. According to the National Resistance Center, the leadership of the occupation administrations has banned a significant number of collaborators from leaving. However, they are still taking their families out and seeking ways to bypass the ban. Okay, and that's all I got on that one there. I'm going to go to my next one now. Uh, this is from Metro. Russia retreats from Bukmut. Bukmut. Uh, Wagner chief accuses army of giving up. Russia retreats from Bakhmut. Wagner chief accuses army of giving up. Russia has admitted it was forced to retreat from parts of Bakhmut with mercenary group Wagner accusing troops of giving up territory. Chief Yevgeny Prigazin said the Ukrainians had seized high ground overlooking the town and opened the main highway leading in from the west. The loss of the Berkivka Reservoir, the loss of this territory they gave up, that's five square kilometers, just today, he said on Friday. Responding to Moscow's claim that troops had changed their position for strategic reasons, Prigazin stressed that the move had been a retreat and not a regrouping picture. Wagner forces previously led the campaign in the city, the Kremlin's main objective and the theater of the war's bloodiest fighting. Prigazin again criticized the military top brass, this time for allowing the front to collapse by not giving his men enough supplies or putting up enough of a fight. The Ukrainian advance near Bakhmut appears to have begun on Tuesday when a Ukrainian unit southwest of the city said it defeated a Russian brigade, recapturing a swathe of land. Prigazin confirmed the Russian brigade there fled. A Ukrainian military report on Friday described fighting in Bakhmut and Russian shelling of nearby towns, but made no mention of any advance or Russian withdrawal, picture, Reuters, more from Metro. The world has long been expecting a counteroffensive from Kiev, which has been receiving hundreds of tanks and weapons from allies including the UK. The recent action has fed rumors the attack from the capital, which has largely been on the defensive since the war started, is imminent. But Ukrainian officials have played this down, with Mr. Zelensky saying he needs more supplies from the West before his fighters can attack. And that's all I got on that one there. And let me go to the next one. This from Wealthy Nickel. Ten common legal companies that are re really just organized crime in disguise. I thought this one w was interesting. Ten common legal companies that are really just organized crime in disguise. Have you wondered if some legal companies are just organized crimes in disguise? These companies are supposed to render services to people but rip them off their hard-earned money. This crime syndicate's effects are seen in the lives of individuals that get scammed daily. And though there is no official list, people in an online. Online review sites. Some of these sites, like Yelp, collect money from businesses through subscriptions to help them advertise to increase engagement and allow customers to give reviews. When you stop paying for the adverts, the sites go berserk on you. They reduce positive reviews and promote negative ones instead. Sometimes, from customers you may have never served. 
So that means that um, if you stop advertising on there, they'll put reviews against your company to people you, you that never use your business. That should be be illegal help. Even when you feel low, you can still go. Even when you feel slow, you can still go. Even when this pharmacy benefit management. These are third-party administrators of drug prescriptions. They handle the processing and payment of prescription drugs. But one person thinks they are causing more harm than good. They call it the root cause behind why it is impossible to get honest and transparent drug pricing. These companies are supposed to help reduce the cost of drugs for patients. Often they do not, but they still get the bonuses either way. Printer ink. Printers now require you to have other colors to print in monochrome. Not just that, the ink and toner must be from the same brand as the printer. The new printer models use subscriptions, if they run out, the printers stop working. So sometimes, it is cheaper to buy a brand new printer than it is to buy ink. Sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? U.S. Health Insurance These services are supposed to cover a portion or the entire medical cost for the insurance recipient. In turn, an agreed amount is paid monthly by the recipient. Sounds simple enough. Except it isn't. Some companies usually cover a meager sum of the medical cost or nothing. One person writes, they are incentivized to charge you more and provide less in service to make more profit. They are grifters and redundant middlemen in every way. The Church of Scientology This is, one of the most successful new American faiths to have emerged in the past century. L. Ron Hubbard founded it in the 1950s. People have the freedom to practice their preferred faith. However, it becomes problematic when they use religion to extort from unsuspecting. To prove a point, people brought up this quote by the founder of Scientology, you don't get rich writing science fiction. If you want to get rich, you start a religion. And that's all. And that's all what uh, religion is. Politicians trading stocks. This has insider trading written all over it. Someone shares their thought. The reason why is that they pass legislation that directly affects stock price. So they essentially have insider knowledge on what precisely will go up and down on the market. You can also look up Nancy Pelosi's husband, that made millions on Nvidia stock right before we sanctioned Russia for not providing computer chips. Coincidence? I think not. It isn't illegal for politicians to trade. Still, the chances of these trades being influenced by the information they have are relatively high. Yeah, that should be illegal. And I thought I heard something a while back that, you know, they're going to stop making... Stop letting politicians trade stocks, which they should. It should be illegal. You know, cause they're like the inside man or woman, depending. Multi-level marketing. These organizations promise riches, but, as always, at a price. Often, it is to quit your job and sell their products. They rarely tell you that you make money from the number of people you rope in, not the number of products you sell. Again, if an offer sounds too good to be true, it usually is. Yeah, it's a saying I go by nowadays. Payday loans. These are quick, short-term loans that have huge interest rates attached to them. The problem is that no one who isn't caught in a pickle would opt for this. They leech on to desperate people who need an instant loan to sort things out, and when the payment isn't paid on time, the interest starts accruing. Also, the short-term loan, which means less than a year, has an annual interest accruing monthly. Yeah, I've been there before, I'm pretty sure a lot of others has too. Go, 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 go. 
Gambling industries. Gambling addiction is a big deal. It doesn't help that it is now so accessible online and offline. These games are rigged to ensure you lose more than you win. When you lose, they make more money. The thrill is so addictive it makes it easier for them to sell their schemes and the hope that you could be the next Bill Gates. Utility companies. These companies are supposed to provide public services for a fee. But people are wondering when they become so ridiculously high. The bills are steadily skyrocketing, making it hard for people to keep up, especially in recent times of inflation. Unfortunately, no one can do anything about it because the companies are monopolistic. That's all I got on this for you. Oh no, it's number 14. Okay, here. 14 high paying jobs that nobody actually wants to do. People avoid certain high paying professions like the plague, even though they offer excellent salaries and benefits. Why is that? Here are some jobs that are not as popular as you might think. Okay, if you want to read that, you go to this link here. Anyway, that's that's all I got on that one. Let me go to the next one here. This is from uh, Ukrainska Pravda. Occupiers are forcefully mobilizing Ukrainian men with Russian citizenship in Kherson Oblast, said the general staff. Even when you feel low, you can still go. Even when you feel slow, you can still in the occupied territories of Kherson Oblast, the invaders are detaining men who previously refused Ukrainian citizenship in favor of Russian citizenship. The detainees are offered to pay off, and those who do not have the means or do not want to pay bribes are forcibly conscripted. Source, General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine on Facebook, information as of 6 o'clock on May 15. Quote, in a number of settlements in Kherson Oblast, Facts of forcible detention of men who previously refused Ukrainian citizenship in favor of Russian citizenship have been reported. After the detention, during the first introductory conversation, the occupiers demand from such citizens an illegal remuneration for postponing mobilization. Persons who refuse to pay a bribe or do not have the required amount of funds are sent by the occupiers to field camps to undergo an accelerated course of general military training. After that, the people are sent to the settlements bordering the contact line. And that's all I got on that one there. And we go to the next one here. This is from uh, Ukraine's Pravda. Over 150,000 Russian troops in southern Ukraine prepare for Ukrainian counteroffensive from the uh, def uh, de defense intelligence. Around 152,000 Russian troops are currently stationed in temporarily occupied territories in southern Ukraine, in Zaporizhia and Kherson Oblasts, preparing to defend their positions against the expected Ukrainian counteroffensive. Source, Ukraine's Defense Intelligence, Andriy Cherniak, spokesman for Ukraine's Defense Intelligence, in a comment for RBC Ukraine. Quote from Cherniak, we are not seeing troops being withdrawn from Zaporizhia or Kherson Oblasts. Yes, they're making, certain, motions taking away some things, evacuating some people, looting, but we are not seeing military units being withdrawn. In Enerhodar, for example, they are taking away everything they can, cars, medical equipment, but they do not withdraw. They are clearly aware that there will be fighting there. Details, Cherniak has said that Russian troops were preparing for defense, reinforcing their existing defense fortifications and constructing new ones, because they know they do not have enough force to go on the offensive. He added that the main goal of the Russian occupation forces is to hold their current positions. He also explained that the Russians are using the so-called evacuation from the occupied territories in southern Ukraine as a cover-up to conduct counterintelligence and filtration operations. They are also forcibly deporting Ukraine supporters because they fear that partisan movements might spring up. And that's all I got on that one there. And you know, all the links will be in my description box. And let's go to the next one here. They're from 1945. Hunter Biden has the uh, Marjorie Taylor Green problem. Man, I still go.
Marjorie Taylor Greene wants to bring women Hunter Biden paid for sex before Congress, the controversial Georgia congresswoman is hinting at a new direction for the House Republicans' probes of the president's son. Hunter Biden is in trouble. The House Republicans' probes of Hunter Biden's finances, laptop, and personal life raise a persistent question, is the GOP actually trying to draw out wrongdoing by the president, or are they just looking to embarrass Hunter Biden? Last week, the House Oversight Committee released what they claimed was new evidence about the Biden family and the influence operation that they had pulled off across several countries. But as pointed out by everyone from the New York Times to, surprisingly, Steve Ducey of Fox News, the release was light on any evidence of any crimes, as well as that President Biden received any money for any of the deals. But that's just your suggestion you actually don't have any facts to that point. You've got some circumstantial evidence, Ducey, a man certainly not known for going on television and defending Democratic officials, said on Fox last week. And the other thing is, of all those names, the one person who didn't profit is but there is no evidence that Joe Biden did anything illegally. A report over the weekend says the House GOP, or at least one member of it, is planning something that almost certainly has no plausible connection to any supposed wrongdoing by Joe Biden. The New York Post reported that the House Oversight Committee is in talks to bring sex workers employed in the past by Hunter Biden to testify before the committee. We're going to track down these women and talk to them and if there is a credible reason that we need to bring them in front of the Oversight Committee then absolutely we will do that. Especially when it involves our national security, Rep. Marjorie Taylor Greene, Republican Georgia, who is on the House Oversight Committee, told the Post. Greene said she has had talks with Rep. James Comer, Republican Kentucky, about doing such a thing, and they are working in that direction, although no one besides Greene appears to have confirmed that such a thing is planned. Congresswoman Greene is very concerned about the possibility that the women being paid for prostitution by the president's son who were foreign nationals were human trafficked, the committee said in a statement to the newspaper. She plans to lead a probe to determine if in fact, they were human trafficked and if the Biden family has tried to intimidate them or cover the story up. The thinking goes that the suspicious activity reports, SARS, obtained by the committee say that the president's son paid women for sex and some of them came from Russia and Ukraine. There was an entire stack of papers and it was each transaction, each person, each LLC, Hunter Biden's law firm, Hunter Biden himself, and multiple Biden family members, then it was all these prostitutes. And you can go through and it gives all the prostitutes' names, addresses, birthdates, telephone numbers, their passports, Green told the newspaper. Biden's infamous laptop consisted of numerous photographs of himself with sex workers, often during drug binges. A request by the Biden campaign in 2020 to remove a nude photo of Hunter later became a matter of contention in the Twitter files debates. Green added that she and the committee want to confirm whether the younger Biden ever brought such women to the White House and cited an extreme danger that the women might be spies. However, little to no evidence has been produced indicating that this might be the case. Perhaps needless to say, there is no connection to speak of between Hunter Biden's reported escapades with sex workers and his father. And no evidence has emerged that the women were trafficked, although the GOP in recent years, including Green's old friends in the QAnon movement, has never been shy about baselessly insinuating top Democrats' involvement in human trafficking. They'll find all the evidence that they don't need. All they can do is just keep working at it. And let me go to my last one here. This is from News Nation. Marching rackets up battle with Biden. Senator Joe Manchin, Democrat West Virginia, is becoming a bigger problem for President Biden and Democrats in the Senate as he faces an uphill re-election battle in West Virginia, a state where former President Trump won one of his biggest victories in 2020. Manchin has criticized Biden and Democrats publicly, opposed various nominees and, this week, said he would oppose every one of the president's nominations to the Environmental Protection Agency, EPA. Before an election in which Biden is casting himself as a centrist and stable choice for the country, Manchin accused his EPA nominees of pursuing an extreme ideology and panned the administration's plan to limit greenhouse pollution from existing power plants. The shots from inside the party are exactly what Biden doesn't want as he tries to unify Democrats ahead of the 2024 race, all at a time when polls show his support from the public is decidedly underwhelming. He is giving the administration fits, and I think, he probably feels like they have it coming, said Senator Kevin Kramer, Republican North Dakota, a member of the Senate Committee on Environment and Public Works, EPW. They threw him under the bus with the Inflation Reduction Act and permitting stuff, and it looks to me he's demonstrating a pretty serious effort to point that out. 
He can hold whatever he wants, as we all can, and make it very difficult for them to advance nominees, Kramer added. And I say good for him. He deserves some concessions. When pressed on whether Biden has reached out to Manchin since he said he would oppose the EPA nominees, White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre said, Senator Manchin is a friend. We are going to continue to have conversations with him. We're going to continue to have a good relationship, she added. Senator Tom Carper, Democrat Delaware, chairman of the EPW committee, told The Hill he was hoping to talk with Manchin about his opposition to convince him that he may want to rethink that position and to find favor with some of the nominees, present and future. I understand that sometimes we get upset, whether it's this administration or another administration, Carper said. With Biden's legislative priorities unable to get past the GOP-controlled House, he is looking toward successful confirmations as something to tout on the campaign trail. But Manchin's threat to hold up nominees, when Democrats have such a narrow majority in the Senate, casts a shadow over Biden's agenda. As Kramer noted, Manchin could still go further. The West Virginia senator chairs the Senate Energy Committee and could hold up nominees who come before that panel, as well. Allies of Manchin argue the latest maneuvers fit squarely with his off-stated line that he is standing up for his state. Manchin. Manchin. Okay, and that's all, I, line that's all I got on that one there. And, uh, oh no I don't, I got more. I think, let's see. Anyway, um, that's how I'm going to play here. Anyway, that's another person I don't trust either. That uh, John Pierre, whatever her name is, she's you know she won't say a negative thing about the White House. You know, well that's her job anyway with the White House. Anyway, that's all I got for you. Remember, I am out for today's news. I will be reading, speaking about world news, interesting news, news to keep you entertained and new to keep you informed. And don't forget to like, subscribe, at least come back once in a while. And until next time, later. Oh, oh yeah, thanks for watching. <laughs>